The 2024-25 Premier League campaign is on the horizon. In preparation, we're previewing every single team and discussing how they'll shape up over the next campaign. We take a look at the transfer business conducted by the team so far and offer suggestions of who else they should move for before the season gets started. We start today with Arsenal, who finished second by two points last season to Manchester City. In this video, we discuss what they need to topple Man City and whether Arteta has what it takes to challenge Guardiola. This is the 24-25 season preview for Arsenal. Alright, let's talk about Arsenal then. We're going to start by touching on their 23-24 season before we get into 24-25. So it was their second season of giving Manchester City a run for the title under Mikel Arteta. Where do they fall short? Because obviously the season before they were close to City, this season just two points off. It was very tight. Yeah, I mean, I feel for them slightly because they gave it a really, really good go last campaign. They were so close to City for you know most most of the season, and that's a tough one to take. You know, for a side as good as Manchester City, for Arsenal to push them all the way like they did, it takes an elite side to challenge Manchester City. I mean, they were brilliant all season, and they. Yeah. To be honest, you, you, uh, yeah, I feel for them a bit because they they gave it a bloody good. Well, I say I don't feel for them, but. Yeah, you you have to give them their plaudits. They were they were phenomenal. Yeah, they were very strong. I mean, pretty much flawless throughout the season. I thought their defence was the best in the league. I think City actually struggled defensively at times last season, but Arsenal were very solid in that regard. I think a big moment for them was that slip up against Aston Villa in the run in. Mm. If they didn't do that, if they'd won that match rather than lost it, they'd have won the title. And so yeah. you look at games like that. Obviously, you can't judge it like that because then maybe City wouldn't have slipped up. At another point in the season, you can always you know there's always those ifs, buts, and maybes. But it did feel like they were just one result away. I mean, the big one which I see a lot of people point out is of course that draw at the Etihad where it was oh it was nil nil and Arsenal didn't really push that game and if they had maybe they'd have got something from it maybe they'd have lost it but by not going for it it felt like they slipped up in that regard and that's going to be the big question is can they take the fight to Man City both in the table but also on the field this season can they do that yeah I mean they'll be hoping to I think the problem obviously you know everyone talked about how dull the game is it's two very similar styles they clash very very I mean, very you know seriously, but as you say, I mean, you can't beat a team to the title if you rock up at their home ground and 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 sit frightened and play for a point. I mean, yeah. that, that's that's just not good enough. That's why City wins the league because what they'll rock up at the Emirates and try and roll you over. And yeah. will <laughs> and, and, and usually, not, not to Arsenal, but to every other team. Usually, will sure. succeed, but yeah, you can't you can't you know, try and beat a team in a title race when you play scared against them. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You look at how Liverpool have always taken the game to Manchester City. There's yeah. a reason they did eventually topple them. It's because City fell off. But they were also really good in that year. And let's talk about then Arsenal going into this season. We're going to start with incomings and outgoings. Now, I'll come out of this by saying we've not included all the incomings and outgoings because mm. a lot of the youth players going out on loan and stuff or being released is not that important. So let's look at the key players then. We'll start with the outgoings. The first of which is Mohamed El Nenny being released. Title race over. <laughs> How could they win it now? But yeah, I think that's probably the right call. I don't think yes. he's a player that added a lot to the no. Arsenal side. They've also loaned out Al Albert Sambi Lekonga. Well, what do you think of Lekonga? Because I thought on loan at Luton last season, he had quite a decent campaign. Is another loan move the right decision to then see if he could fit for Arsenal? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah as you say, he had a good campaign at Luton, but for me, that's not enough to, to show that he can play even a bit part role in yeah. a, you know a title-challenging side. So yeah, definitely another loan move is a good one, especially to a top side uh, like Sevilla. I mean, yeah. He, he that's that's a good move because he can really prove his metal there. Yeah, you know, if he plays well in that severe side, then suddenly you know you've got a good player. Yeah, and then Nuno Tavares on loan to Lazio Tavares. Uh, he's not realistically going to play for Arsenal again. I don't think unless he goes to Lazio and has one of the greatest seasons <laughs> we've ever seen. I don't see that. But if he does have going out and have a good loan spell at Lazio, maybe that's a potential sell on fee well, yeah. increased. For uh, the yeah, whether he play, whatever happens there, if he plays well or he plays badly, he's going to get sold. Yeah, but it, but it would benefit Arsenal if he could do all right and they mm. might be able to fetch a decent yeah. fee. Yeah. Might be able to recoup some of the, the um, money they forked out for him. Okay. Let's look at the incomings then because they're the important one. Now, the one that most people don't realise is David Raya for £32 million. Now, this mm. is only really important on the on the spreadsheets, but let's talk about the importance of Raya while we have the moment because last season he was phenomenal. Yeah. Absolutely I mean, incredible. Yeah, I mean, he was ridiculous. As we, as we say, Arsenal were the best defence in the league. And yes, their back four is ridiculously strong and it's got even stronger. 
But, you know, you have to give some of the credit as well. David Raya in between the sticks, coming in for Aaron Ramsdale. Raya, he, yeah, brilliant, brilliant goalkeeper. We knew he was a good, brilliant a goalkeeper at Brentford. And in an elite side like Arsenal, he has proven he's capable of, of, of being very, very good at his game. You know, to, to, to transform his performance from a, that Brentford side into this Arsenal side. It's a much higher level. They play, their games mean much more and they play, you know, much higher quality, as I said. He's done really, really well, and he's he's looked solid. Whether it's in a big prem game, whether it's on the Champions League stage, he's yeah. had a good showing. Yeah, definitely. I think he's up that level to accommodate for playing for Arsenal. I also, obviously, he was they kept the most clean sheets in the league last mm. season. He won the Golden Glove, I believe, in the Premier League. He had a really strong first campaign, and I think he'll be looking to build on that going into next season with Arsenal. The other incoming then, Ricardo Calafiori. What a signing. What an addition. He had a really strong year. It was a great season last season in Bologna. I think this is a really nice signing. Yeah, and, um, and obviously a lot of people say that he just carries aura, but you know, apart from that, he is a brilliant, brilliant footballer, yeah. an incredible defender, part of a Bologna side last season who you know, were transformed under Thiago Motta. They were superb. He was superb. Yeah. And I really think this is a good move. Obviously, the one big question will be, as we spoke about Dad Ryer, can he up his performance to play at that higher level? Will he you know, manage to increase his level to match the quality of Arsenal? Probably, definitely so. I mean, he had a good Euro, it's hard to tell, because Italy were knocked out early and they were pretty crap overall. But yeah, brilliant for Bologna. Looked solid for Italy in a poor Italy side. I think this is a very, very good deal. Just got to hope it's going to pay off. Yeah, I mean, the his profile is on screen now. You can see, based on his FB ref, incredible numbers. It's just a sea of green. Yeah. He doesn't rank in the 90th percentile for a lot of things. His, I mean, his tackles and interceptions numbers, his interception was both in the 96th and 92nd percentile, six, uh, respectively. Also, percentage of aerials one, I found this really interesting. 95th percentile, which, considering the amount that Bologna played the ball on the floor... That's a really impressive thing. And when you think about how combative and how physical the Premier League is, I think that's a really nice stat. Because obviously the Serie A is probably the second most physical, combative league. Mm. And when you look at where the Premier League is going and you look at the City team with these huge physical players, you do need to have something to to challenge that. And I think Calafiori evidently can with those those areas one, those tackles. So I think that bodes really well. And I think... Uh, he will fit this Arsenal team really nicely. So mm. let's go on over to the the tactics screen then, and, and or the squad overview, and have a look at what they've got this season. So I've lined it up in the four three three. They tend to look like out of mm. possession. Obviously, we know on the ball it's going to settle into a, a situational back three and, and stuff like that. So it's it's difficult to work out what they're going to do um, this season because. It's quite interesting. Obviously, goalkeeper was fairly settled. You've got Raya there. Ramsdale will be back up. And then I think Hein at the moment is that third choice. But I don't know much about him, to be honest. The big question mark for me is in that back four. Now, notably, William Saliba is the only right centre-half at the club. But you can put a left centre-half there. It's not going to be the end of the world. Ben White can also very much cover there. Mm-hmm. He is a, a centre-half by trade. He's only played at that as, as a right-back under Arteta. So... I don't think they've got a big issue there. And obviously Timber can co- cover that right-hand side. The big, I think Euron Timber's going to feel like a new signing this season. Because mm, he barely played yeah. for them last season, obviously, being out pretty much all campaign with an injury. We expect he'll probably play at left-back and play that inverted role. And for me, that creates a big question mark. Because you've got Kieran Tinney returning from low. Now, you'd imagine he'll be sold on for a you know yeah. decent bit of profit. They could probably fetch £10 million. Zinchenko, who's been starting, but I think a lot of Arsenal fans will be more than happy mm. to see him leave this season, this uh, this summer. We've seen Jakub Kiwiel play that left centre half, that left back role, sorry, as well. And now we've got Ricardo Calafiori. Now I don't see Calafiori coming in as a rotation option, so it's yeah. a big question mark as to who starts. I put him in at left centre half just because they're so stacked at left back. It was easier to to portray as that, but. For me, it's most likely we'll see Calafiori at left back. Now, the big question mark is, could he play that inverted role? Because he's very comfortable in possession, Calafiori, mm. and he's physically imposing enough, I think, to play alongside Declan Rice. So that's going to be something really interesting to see. Uh, speaking of Rice, obviously you've got Rice there, you've got Party as an option, Jorginho can play in the midfield, as can Kai Havertz. And, well, Havertz is going to be really interesting this season as well because mm. we saw him being used more and more as a striker towards the end of the season. We saw him play that role for Germany. Is that where we expect him to start? And in which case, does he start over Gabriel Jesus? Yeah, I think both those are a yes for me. I think 
my one concern for Arsenal would have been that forward line. I think Havertz is the right call there. He's shown that he can do it. He can play there. And in the right time, team in the right setup, he can be a very you know, uh, a decent volume goal scorer in that front line. Yeah, and I think the bigger quality is that he brings others into the game. When you've got yeah. someone who can bring in the likes of Leandro Trossard, Martin Odegaard, Bukayo Saka, for me, he's somewhat indispensable to how this Arsenal attack mm. is going to function next season. Obviously, Martin Odegaard with Fabio Vieira flanking him. I want to see more from Vieira this season. I think he'll probably get some more minutes. He's, he did have more than he did last season, yeah. uh, this season. So that's an improvement. But I want to see him have a heightened importance in this Arsenal side. The right-hand side is Saka and then Reese Nelson. Now, I think that's a big question mark there because I don't think Nelson's a great backup. We've seen that Saka has to play so much football. For me, that right wing may be somewhere they look to improve. On the other side, Martinelli, Trossard, Smith-Rowe. Now, Smith-Rowe's heavily linked with the move away. And there's a lot of question marks over Martinelli last season because he definitely didn't have the same level of points that he did in 22-23. Yeah, it was it was a tough season for Martinelli. It was a bit of a weird one, as you say. No one really expected him to... To struggle as much as he did, and obviously Trossard came in and he had a strong, much stronger campaign. As you say, Hacker, uh, Hacker, Saka did a lot of the um, heavy lifting on that right hand side, and Havertz as well. Uh, you know, had a solid campaign. But as you say, I think Martinez has a big question mark there. Hopefully, he can deliver the kind of performances and the kind of you know quality that we know he possesses. It would be a shame to see him have an, uh, you know, see him have another questionable season. We want to see him up there firing, and it, and you know he's one of those where if he's firing, other people around him will fire. And it's, I mean that front three for Arsenal are all on their game. It looks very very worrying. Yeah, but to be fair though, I wouldn't be surprised if, like we saw towards the end of last season, Trossard is the starting option on that left hand mm. side. He's proven himself to be a lot yeah. more reliable. So Martinelli's got a lot to prove this season because a player of his age, he's going to want to be starting to come into his prime now. He's got to raise that performance level because. Yeah. Trossard was so good last season and Martinelli just didn't find that same level. He's got to got to improve that. And then obviously up front you've got Jesus, you've got Nketi and you've got Havertz. I'll just put Havertz in midfield to mm. try and balance out this squad a little bit more but and obviously show the different options. But what do what does Jesus do this season? Because I think Havertz is probably going to start up front. Is Jesus pining to start on that left-hand side? Is that an option for Arsenal? Where does he fit? I think Jesus was a really weird one. And I, and I think a lot of people disagree, would disagree with me, but I find it interesting that Arsenal were, were planning to bring him in as your, as your starting number nine. I mean, yeah, he, had, he was really good for, for City, but there's a reason he was behind Aguero. Because for me, I don't know if Jesus has the quality or the high volume goal goal scoring ability that you need from an out you know, your striker who's going to be playing mostly every game and I, I I find it interesting I I, I think that it'll be tough for Jesus to get in this side I really do um, but yeah. I, I don't necessarily think that's a terrible thing from an Arsenal point of view for Jesus it will certainly be certainly a solid backup isn't he but then yeah. for Jesus, as you say for Jesus you've got a question because he's left Manchester City to come over here and, and have a starting role for Arsenal he very much did in 22-23 that first season where they took the fight to City mm. he started to play less and less last season I know he had a few injury con- issues but yeah. he started to play less and less last season and you think his, his game time will only diminish next season mm. I, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if if they're chasing the game in the last 20 minutes, do you prefer Jesus or do you prefer Nketiah? I wouldn't be surprised if Arteta is looking over at his bench and going, I want to put Eddie Nketiah on there. Because he's going to make those runs in behind. Mm. He's going to go and chase the ball a little bit more than Jesus is. So I, I think Jesus finds himself in a weird place now in the pecking order. So let, let's talk other transfers then. There's a lot less to do here. When we're looking at other clubs further down the line, there's going to be a lot more tra- yeah. transfers to discuss or options that we think they should go for. For Arsenal, I, I'm denied about a right centre half, but I think they've got enough cover there with with uh, William Saliba obviously starting, and then Ben White as an option to play there. So instead, want to look at that right hand side because Saka's got that starting role, but they mm. need someone who could come in and play more of a rotation option. Could also play in other roles because you can't. If you're going to have anyone of any quality, you can't tell them they're just going to be back up to Saka. So let's talk about someone who very much impressed at the year. He's had a really strong season at RB Leipzig last campaign. Javi Simons. Ooh. I think Simons is someone who's always been chased by Arsenal. Now, but before 
I after I did this, after I put him in this the plan for this video, it has come out that United are heavily interested and may well be putting in a bid of upwards of 80 million. So they may now face a lot of competition for his signature, so that might be something they're not looking at anymore. But we know that Arteta really likes Xavi Simons. The obviously the question marks around the price tag, but Arsenal haven't spent much this summer. So they definitely could look at, at doing that. What do you think Simons adds enough to this team? I I find it a really interesting one. I think, yeah, I I, I like Xavi Simons. I think he's a really really good player, and and he he can perform on his day at the highest level. I do think there is a jump, obviously, between Leipzig and Arsenal. I would be intrigued to see how he handled that, but I think he would get away with it because, as you say, he'd be coming in to play predominantly on the right hand side, predominantly as a backup to Bukayo Saka. So there wouldn't be too much. There wouldn't be too much pressure on the fact that he would have to deliver from minute one. He'd have to turn up and he'd have to, have to adjust the Premier League you know, after the first game. So I, I definitely think it would make sense for Arsenal. For Simons, I think it's a big move, obviously. But he will know he's coming in to play backup. Well, that's, that's the thing. I don't think it's... Because obviously there is rotation. I guess it's rotation. Sides. It's not yeah. a backup role. He can still play in middle midfield. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Odegaard played a little bit deeper in there. Yeah. Played in that sort of more Jorginho role. Because obviously that does become an attacking fielder anyway when, they, when they're in possession. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do something like that. And then that can accommodate Simons in a more attacking area. Obviously it gives the option to bench Bukayo Saka and give him a rest. I think it would be a really nice move. The problem is now they face competition from United. It is a little bit pricey. I say, I think it's that, difficult to do. It's a lot of money for a player that isn't going to play every single week. And I mean, I like it. I think he's a very, very good player, and he would suit Arsenal. And I think he'd play well. And and you know, obviously, realistically, no matter you know, it would take a City or Real Madrid to come in for. for I don't know how what you know how he feels, but for me, it will take. There's not many sides bigger than Arsenal. So you know they would probably win if there was a you know a bidding you know kind of war between you know in for two Simons in terms of contract offers. It depends. I think if United yeah. were putting more they money might. on the table they and might. a starting role, it's it's a very difficult one to do now. Obviously, as I say, before, as I was right when I was preparing this, he there wasn't anything linking him to United. Yeah, obviously that's come out in the in the last few days. Yeah. So it's one of those. It would be absolutely lovely. He'd be a brilliant, brilliant signing. If they if they were to go get him, brilliant. If they're not, not the end of the world. They're a very very good yeah. side, as you say. It's hard to pick holes in this team. It really is hard to find yeah. to find problems because even you, know, you look as you said, right centre half looks like a problem, but you can always chuck a left centre half or Ben White, or you can put somebody in there. So, so yeah, it's definitely hard to find areas in this Arsenal side that need improving. I, I think these if, if to bring in Simons would be more of like a uh, not a luxury signing, but in terms of it, it is a bit of a, yeah, bit of a maybe. luxury because mm. he's not a necessity, is he? But he would add a, a fair it's like bit. We've bought him because we could, and we know he's yeah. good. Well, yeah, I think he would be a really nice, really nice addition. I also looked at Yaman Bakayoko, but he is very strongly linked with Liverpool, and yeah. obviously with Arnie Slot there, I just don't see Arsenal being able to convince him to join that project rather than go and join Liverpool, especially given the fact that. We expect Mohamed Salah will likely move on next summer and mm. or the next or the year after that at the very latest, and so Bakayoko there would be in line for a starting role with Liverpool with the manager in Arnie yeah. Slot that he's very familiar with. I don't see how they win that. I do think Bakayoko would give them a lot though because he for me is very similar to Jeremy Doku in that he's got that raw burst. He's he loves to take players on. He's a really good dribbler and I think his dribbling numbers rank as some of the highest in Europe. I was seeing a comparison with him and Eden Hazard. Obviously, Hazard's really high. Mm. But in terms of successful take-ons per 90, he wasn't too far off. So mm. I think he would add a lot in that regard. However, I don't see it happening now with Arne Slot. Mm. Pining for him to join Liverpool, I can't really see him going to uh, going to Arsenal. But yeah, no, no, no. I, I think that should be an area they're looking at. I wouldn't be surprised if they're not because they seem to trust that Saka's going to just stay fit forever. Which is bizarre. I agree. I, I don't see how they're not looking at a right winger at the moment. For me, that's mm. the, that's the next area of improvement. Because I like Calafiori. I'm not sure it was an integral signing. No. Though. I think signing a backup to Saka would have been more more crucial. Obviously, by signing Calafiori, they could move on Zinchenko for a bit. They will likely sell Kieran Tierney. But I'm not sure it was a, a crucial, crucial signing. Yeah, no. 
But yeah, I think things look really positive for Arsenal next season. We're very interested to see how they get on. It's going to be a tough campaign. Again, City are going to be very good. It's going to be a question mark as to whether Arsenal have learnt enough from the last two years, whether Arteta's developed enough in the last two years to go and take on the behemoth that is Manchester City and, and the you know mastermind that is Pep Guardiola. But I think it's going to be a really strong campaign for Arsenal. Again, mm. I'd be very surprised if they're not at least second in the league. That would be a, a huge shock. Yeah, I mean, well, that's the thing for me. I expect Arsenal to be right up there as City again. Even if they're not on pace with City, they will probably be comfortably second. Because obviously we'll touch on it with the more previews that come along. But there's questions over Chelsea, United. There's always yeah, questions over There's questions Chelsea over United, questions over Tottenham. Liverpool, again, is a bit of an unknown as well. So for Arsenal, by actually you know, having stability, you know, it kind of feels like you know, they're kind of guaranteed, set, you know, not guaranteed set place, but they're gonna, they could be quite comfortable again because there's a lot of teams with a lot of unknowns, and and Arsenal keeping, you know, keeping that formality, you know, not formality, but keeping very similar. That similarity yeah. is, is crucial, I think, for Arsenal because even if they're not winning the league, even if they're not two points off City, they should be pretty solid in second come next season. Yeah, as you say, not a guarantee, but I think it's very difficult to envision yeah. them dropping. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not as close as City this season. Mm. I, not that you know City have got loads better, but it's very difficult to still be you know neck and neck with them. Yeah. Obviously, if City were to slip off this season, Arsenal are in mm. the prime position to go and take advantage of that and go and win the Premier League title. So it's going to be really interesting to see. I think Arsenal will be right at the sharp end once again, and we should be in yeah. for another exciting Premier League season. But that is everything for this first preview. We're, of course, be previewing every single Premier League club as we build up into the Premier League 24 25 campaign. So look out tomorrow because we'll be talking about Aston Villa, the most active team in the Premier League this yeah. transfer window by quite a margin. That was so. about 45 minutes long it to get their transfer business. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just be doing that for an hour. But yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching the first one. Obviously, look out tomorrow for Aston Villa and every other day as we preview every club till the start of the season. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. See ya.